Welcome to welcome to KMTV Live. I'm Jay Judah with Jacobs. We are right here at the CDC party headquarters where Ambassador George Manuguya will be having a statement delivered upon his return from Nigeria. As you may know that the ambassador was out of the country for some days and he just arrived in the country. He will soon be arriving in this press hall at the party headquarters where he will be making some formal statement to the nation. And in time for now, he will be coming. Exactly what he will be speaking on, we are not aware, but from all indication, of course, he will be talking about the just ended elections and the results as been pronounced by the National Elections Commissions. There are thousands of supporters already in the compound of the party headquarters, the Congress, the Coalition for Democratic Change, and KMTV is live here to cover this all important press statement. In the hall, you have the commemorations of local media practitioners and international media practitioners. They have all come to cover this all important statement from the standard bearer of the Coalition for Democratic Change, Senator Ambassador George Weir. Um, he is expected in in a moment from now. He will be walking in along with party interrupts. We, we understand he have come in. He arrived in the country with Senator Johnson, but we are not sure if Senator Johnson is going to come here or not. However, we we are here waiting for the arrival of Ambassador George Weir to be speaking to the press on the just ended elections in the country. I think this will be his first statement publicly on the elections in Liberia exactly what he would be speaking about we are not sure as i said but he would definitely come and address himself to everything they run of and what all the coalitions is up to we 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 are live in the conference hall of the coalitions of the coalition for democratic change the cdc of course, there are party officials that would be present here. Um, the senator will be arriving in the hall with a huge interrage. And coming in the hall is Honorable Alex Taylor, um, works in Tape, um, Honorable Kidwee McIntosh, Ambassador Kidwee McIntosh. Um, they're entering the hall. We, we can see them walking in already. There's a clear sign that the ambassador can enter this hall at any time. 
any time the ambassador will enter the the hall. Wilson Taipei have entered. Um, former House Speaker Ellis Tyler had just entered in the hall. Ambassador Gabriel McIntosh, I can also see the arrival of Honorable Moses Colley. Yeah, they have all arrived and they have taken a seat right on the front pew. I saw former pro tem um, Western Guy Fingney and also see Honorable Gabriel Yinkan um, in the hall. I see one of the representatives, Kennedy of the CDC. Um, in these elections, um, Honorable Joseph Thor is also in the hall. And yes, there are like the dignitaries that are present here today to grace this all important occasion at the party headquarters of the Coalition for Democratic Change. And just enter the hall, I see Honorable Akaros Gray, who have also entered the hall and just behind Honorable Gray, I uh, see Honorable Western Guy Milton Fingley, who is also walking in. And I can't call the names of all the dignitaries that are entering the hall right now. Some I will tell so, so. Yes, I see Honorable Vermeer Kone. Um, Honorable from Henry Conan had just also entered the the hall. Uh, it's a jam park hall. The conference room of the Coalition for Democratic Change is jam part with party tower executive members of the party are all here along with the media, both local and international media practitioners are here. understand the the ambassador have a stop outside in the compound to greet partisans that have come to welcome him um, the ambassador is somewhere outside where he's greeting partisans who have gathered in the compound of the correlation for democratic change and thereafter he will make his way upstairs for this all important um, press conference as we know or a statement to the nation or addressing partisans It's really a jam park hall with executive committee members of the Coalition for Democratic Change. Um, as you know, the Congress for Democratic Change, now the Coalition for Democratic Change, is the collaboration of three political parties. Um, the NPP, as you know, is part of this coalition. Um, and then the Congress of Democratic Change, also you have... Yes, um, I see Mulbaki Molu have just also entered the, the hall. Again, there are still a lot of adjustment. Um, there are a lot of adjustment taking place right now before the senator can arrive. We're thinking 
by the time the <laughs> the ambassador arrived, he may go straight into the press conference, or there would be some other statements before the ambassador take on the podium to to speak. We we are not sure exactly what he will be speaking on. But from all indications, we can hint for sure that he will be talking about the results from the just in the occasion. So we 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 are here and waiting the arrival of the standard bearer for the coalition for democratic change. As you already know, um, the National Election Commission has called for the second round of these elections after all political parties in this process did not accumulate the required vote by the Constitution. So we, we are expected to go for the run out by November 7 would be the elections date if everything remain constant as it is. We have the unity party and that of the coalition for democratic change that would be going into this um, runoff. It's, it's in it's in that light that the ambassador will be addressing a major press conference here. Uh, yeah, I think there's a huge turnout of partisans outside of the compound and the ambassador is taking some time to greet partisans well we just of the correlations outside. And I know it would take some time to have the ambassador walk into the hall because Oxide is jam parked with supporters of the correlations. Uh, yeah. Bye. November 7, we will have the run of elections. And yes, we we await to see the vigorous campaign of the two political parties that are in this um, run of the Coalition for Democratic Change, CDC, and the ruling Unity Party. Uh, the two parties we are yet to see official we are yet to see all of the official endorsement um, by individuals parties that will give support to either side in this runoff as far as we know we have not seen a major or any major collaboration so far in this um, runoff. Uh, we just think that in a time from now or within the next one week, there would be some major collaboration on either side. And so far, as I said, we have not seen any vigorous campaign from either parties, but I think at this stage, the they both parties are in serious negotiations with other political institutions and individuals to come aboard to make their dream come to reality. And we, we expect to see a peaceful runoff as we experience in the first round of these elections. Uh, yes. Yes, the ambassador. The ambassador is now walking. Yes, ambassador, we are have now walking. 
Okay. Will Basler have entered? Yes, he's, he's walking in. Good evening. Hello. Members of the press, we would like to welcome you to uh, this platform. At uh, this time, we we strictly go into the program. Uh, we call on Reverend Fester Logan for uh, an invocation. May we all rise. Let us bow our heads as we pray. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the seal of arrival of our leader. We thank you, Father, for preserving us as a party ready for a new dispensation in our nation. And we give you praise and honor in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, we will now go on to the next item here. Welcome remarks by the campaign chairman, um, Prof. Uh, Prof. Dr. Tukagiwe McIntosh. We're going to be making a welcome remark. I like that one. Your Excellency, members of the Governing Council, our distinguished partners, members of the press, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, we would like to say how pleased we are to have back with us our Excellency, the President in waiting, and how pleased we are to have he and his entire entourage to have gone and come back safely. We've gathered here for him to not just talk to us in this room, but to talk to the Liberian nation. And so we'd like to welcome all of you who are here both in presence, your physical self, and all of those that will be listening to the whole episode on Radio Land, and those that will follow the papers on the morrow, which is tomorrow. We welcome all of you. And so with no ado, kindly relax yourself and let us absorb the wisdom of our standard bearer. So quickly, before we go to the next item, we'd just like to recognize uh, those person here today uh, in this hall. We have uh, Honorable J. Uh, Chenekan Alice Talo Sr., members of the Governing Council, Honorable Bezong Finley, uh, Honorable Moses Wakoli, Chairman of the Liberal People's Democratic Party and member of uh, the Governing Council. We have uh, Chief Sui Allen, Chairman Emeritus of the National Patriotic Party, a member of the Governing Council. We have uh, Chairman Nathaniel Fallo Magi, uh, National Chairman of the Mighty Coalition for Democratic Change, the CDC. We have uh, Honorable Wissa Blamo. We have, of course, Professor Wissing K. Tape, Campaign Chairman, uh, Campaign Manager, in fact. And also, uh, we also have uh, Mr. John Yaboti, also here, and members of uh, the CDC Legislative Caucus. Honorable Thomas Panafala and other stalwarts, including uh, Mobake Molu Jr., the VCO. We have uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Joseph P. Tall, and of course, uh, Mr. Azik Vatuba, uh, Rufus Daikote, and the chairman of uh, the, the chaplain general of the CDC, uh, Reverend Fester Logan. Uh, Honorable Bill Tuawe is also here. Honorable J. Gibral Yinka is also here today. And of course, we want to say thank you so much for your presence here. And uh, Duana Sion, member of the Media Coordinating Committee, and a lot of other partisans are here. Thank you so much. And at this time, we will now call on the campaign manager, Professor Wilson K. Tappe, for the introduction. Your 
Your Excellency, the President in waiting, George Manawia, distinguished members of the Governing Council, the Chair of the Coalition for Democratic Change, the Honorable Nathaniel Fallow McGill, members of the press, distinguished partisans, friends in this hall. It is a difficult task to introduce somebody that has made it from the level where no one expects to move to the top all by himself and remains there alone up to this point. It is a pleasing duty for me, especially someone who had the opportunity and the privilege to see this young man, whom most people don't know, but who has been the epitome of peace and stability in this country. The man whose source of generosity thousands of people have benefited. And a man who stands as the representative of the downtrodden, our poor people, somebody they have seen to champion their cause. I have the distinguished pleasure to introduce to you a friend, a young brother, a patriot, a nationalist, a man who understands everything that is embodied in suffering, but who has the heart that this country needs to move forward. I have the great pleasure to introduce to you my friend and my young brother, His Excellency George Manawia, the incoming president of this republic, who will be making a statement to the nation. Ambassador Weah. Thank you, Mr. Deva. Thank, thank you for a beautiful introduction. You may have your seats. Fellow Liberians, ladies and gentlemen of the press, our international partners, peace loving people all over the world, we want to use this opportunity to give praise to the Almighty God for his many blessings upon our country and for carrying us peacefully through the first phase of our electoral process. We also want to thank you, the Liberian people, for peacefully engaging the process and agreeing that we deserve a peaceful transition. Let me also express thanks and appreciation to those who took part in the process and for, the, for their contributions they made to the process. I want to congratulate those who all won their seats in the legislature. I look forward to working with you in the not too distant future as we strive to move our country to a higher level of development and prosperity. Let me, let me also thank President Madam Ellen Johnson Salif for demonstrating to Africa and the world at last that we have leaders on the continent who are ready to turn over power when their terms expire. In furtherance of my appreciation and recognition, I would like to recognize the National Elections Commission, NEC, 
for the effort made in conducting the first round of elections, even though we still decry the many lapses and irregularity that engulf the process. We want to caution NEC strongly that history has asked you to perform a very important job that will see our country experience for the first time since 1944 the peaceful transfer of power from one living president to another living president elect. Our people have been waiting for this moment for a very long time. It is therefore mandatory that you perform this job responsibly without fear or favor. The continued peace and prosperity of this country depends on how you will conduct these elections. We are aware that there are many influences and pressures on you. But remember that the job is to announce the will of the people and nothing else. Yes, the will, the will of the people and nothing else. Fellow Liberians, ladies and gentlemen of the press, we want to use this medium to also tell the country, our international partners, and my partisans about my position on key issues as we approach the second round of the election, which I believe is a defining moment for our country. I would like to categorically say to you that the Liberian people spoke very loudly and clearly in the first round that they want a change. And I hope that all the different interests have heard that message. That these elections are about the hope and future of our country and that no amount of fear tactics and intimidation will stop the Liberian people from realizing the change they truly desire. <laughs> that this information they are spreading that setting international power will not work with the CDC government is false, misleading and dishonest. We have met most leaders and our international partner and show them that our government will play by the rules and seek the interests of the Liberian people who have suffered for so long. We want all Liberians to know that that, that international partner are prepared to work with whosoever the people choose to be their leader. The notion again that the CDC is a movement to bring child state back to this country is not true. This is the lowest level that my opponents have taken our national politics. Instead of telling you about how they will make your lives better after being in power for 12 years, my opponent and his people a lying to you that Charles Taylor will influence me when you make me your president. I want you to know that the case with Charles Taylor is already settled in the international court and we fully respect that decision and there is no way he can run Liberia from there. The CDC has its own agenda. The CDC agenda is not an MPP agenda. The CDC agenda is not a Taylor agenda. Our vision for this country, which we have clearly explained since the 2005 elections, is about an inclusive form of government where everyone having equal access 
to opportunities and resources, including the poor and marginalized. Stop, 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 stop. We want to tell you today that the CDC government will not engage in wish hunt, divisiveness, or tribalism. Our country has suffered too long, and it is time for a leader that will unite our people to move on. We want to build on whatever progress we have made as a country over the last 12 years and correct whatever mistake or shortcoming that took place. Let me also clarify that I will continue to respect Malan Salif as the President of the Republic of Liberia and I also see her as a mother. While we have disagree over the years, ideologically, as to the forward march of our country, there is absolutely no reason for me to go out there insulting or disrespecting her. For 12 years, I have remained the true voice of the voiceless in our country. For 12 years, I have kept the touch of hope burning for the marginalized. People of Liberia, as the leader of the opposition for 12 years, I have worked immensely to make Liberia peaceful and stable. Therefore, I want to make it crystal clear that I will not engage in any action that has the propensity to derail the gains we have made. In view of the above, I would like to strongly debunk the lies being perpetrated by enemies of progress that I am receiving support from Manan Salif. If the United Party is not able to cultivate a relationship with its outgoing standard bearer, they should not scapegoat the CDC. <laughs> You have your problems, deal with it. I want the Liberian people to think very hard about this. Don't give power to people who are disunited and very distrustful of each other. Those that are bent on creating division and acrimony among our people. The CDC intends to utilize the skills and talent of every Liberian, regardless of which political party they belong or how they voted in these elections. This country belongs to all of us, and we must find a way to develop it in an inclusive manner for all Liberians. No leader can be successful by dividing the people he or she governs like we see the Unity Party doing. Fellow Liberians, ladies and gentlemen of the press, before I close, let me again assure all of our citizens and all of our international partners that the CDC is comprised of qualified and capable Liberians who have this country at heart and are prepared to do whatever it takes to move it forward. Yeah. Fellow Liberians, I have no history of violence. I repeat myself. Fellow Liberians, I have no history of violence. So do not allow anyone to deceive you that Liberia will fall into lawlessness and chaos just because the CDC won an election. If you look at your history, since 2005, we have remained peaceful even when we disagree with the outcome of past elections. CDC is and will continue to be non-violent movement comprised of patriotic Liberians. Those who spread such lies and fear 
are dishonest people who want to do everything to maintain the power even if the people spreading the lies have done nothing good for the country. They have 12 years of leadership that you gave them and they did not improve your conditions. We don't think they can face it in the next six years. It is time for the new breed of leaders to take the stage and make their contribution to clean up the mess. <laughs> Fellow Liberians, my record as a proven patriot and achiever is there for all of you to see. I came from a very poor and humble background, like most of you. I used my God-given talent with the support of my late grandmother, Emma Brown, to lift myself out of poverty. I represented Liberia in the international arena with class and compassion. I have stood up for the marginalized and disadvantaged people. I have used my capacity, resources, and fame to bring international attention to the suffering, to the suffering of my country while going through when it was needed most. I have never walked away from this country. I have never walked away from you, my people, and I promise you that if you entrust me with the presidency of our country, I would never ever fail you. I have lots of friends in the international cycle that are prepared to help our country move forward. My team and I are prepared for the challenges that lies ahead. We know it won't be easy, but we are fully prepared. The notion that only one group of people know how to fix this country problems, even though they haven't done so, in the last 12 years, is a total deception. Yes. My fellow partisans, I would like to commend you for your votes in the first round and encourage you not to be discouraged as nothing good comes easily. Change is almost, almost here. And hope is alive. Hope is still alive. We started this journey together and we must finish it together. I beg your indulgence to please complete the good work you have started by going back to the polls to vote on October 7th. Not just to vote, but to ensure that you, your vote properly, you vote properly so that your vote cannot be deemed invalid. I would like to further admonish you to please don't fall to their own scrupulous tactics by selling your, vote, your voting cards to the supporters of opposition parties that did not make it to the second round. I want to extend an olive branch to you and want you to know that the CDC is your home and we welcome you to come home so that we transform lives together and collectively build a better Liberia. <laughs> to our colleagues at NEC, history is washing you. The world is washing. The people have spoken. Liberia deserves nothing less than the free, fair, and a transparent process that produces the will of the Liberian people. Democracy is about the will of the people, 
and not the will of the selected few. On this note, fellow Liberians, let me wish all of us a peaceful elections on November 7, as the CDC and our opposition friends are ready to take state power and transform the lives of its people. May the Almighty God and Allah bless us and save our dear Maman Liberia. I thank you. You, that was the voice of Ambassador George Manning. We are the standard bearer of the Coalition for Democratic Change. Um, key in his speech was denouncing the the popular campaign thing from his opponent about Charles Taylor said the case of Taylor has already been settled and he's also calling for opposition collaboration right now we are in the session in the prayer Thank you. On that note, we've come to the end of this uh, press briefing today. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. K KMTV is live. Right there in the conference hall of the Coalition for Democratic Change. We have come to an end of this all important press conference where numerous of issues were discussed or highlighted by the standard bearer and senator of Moisturado, Ambassador George Weir. He strikes the need for Liberians to unite and he strikes the need that this country remains peaceful as we go to the October 7 elections. And he did mention in his speech that he have always been a man. He have always been a man of peace. And right now, my present is on Rakara Street. On the we would like to talk to you live on KMTV Live. Yeah, we are just facing our camera. It will be a pleasure. Now you have been witnessed by thousands of Liberians here and abroad. What do you make of the ambassador um, statement? First and foremost, we just want to tell the Almighty God, thank you. But uh, the statement was comprehensive, and I one of the things that I pick out in the statement, uh, the statement addresses some of the perception, like the issue of Mr. Taylor, for example, like the issue of President Sully's support, for example. Those were things that were being debunked. Also, the issue of not wish hunting Liberians and the issue of government or inclusion. Those are very critical issues that were being addressed, and I asked in his policy to keep on the struggle and ensure that I will go to November 7. And I caution the National Elections Commission while hailing them for an election by the same time raising issues of discrepancy. And I, the biggest concern is that give the results to those who deserve the result as the Liberian people have spoken come November 7. So I, I'm not impressed. That's just we are. And I know that I elevated him to the B-52 of Liberian border politics, but none have taken him to another level of the atomic bomb that was dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I saw, you, I saw you, I saw your face, I saw your expression as the ambassador was deliberating on the key issues. What, what really make you happy? I saw the expression. As you Not that I'm happy, but uh, the perception that uh, one Mr. Taylor will be brought back. He said that they will respect the international protocols and details on Mr. Taylor. And I, it's a false who for anybody to dare dream about that. Also, he asked the unity party to start spurring the rumor of scapegoating that President Sadi is supporting us. They should be able to cultivate their own relationship 
we have and settle their in house and don't give power to people that are disunited. And so quickly, just to mention, how do you feel being elected for the second time in district number eight? And congratulations on behalf of KMTV. This is the first time we have interacted with you since your victory. I the victory has been certain, and sometimes when I'm listening to the loud mouth out there making some statements, I just smile because I've always lived for my people. I've always done what is best for them. So the best judgment is not those who live outside the district or those who reside in different locales that have been criticized. So uh, the people spoke. And I even if we went to election one million times, and I'm on the ticket, I will win. Because I've endlessly labored for everything that I achieved in my life history. That was one of our Carlos Gray, and we hope to have you live on our subsequent show. So expect us at any time, KMTV, we will come to you at any time to have you on our thank show. Thank you very much. Thank and you I so much. Thank you for doing a job in the Republic of Liberia. Now let me say thank you very much. Victory of certain vote number two. Come November 7. Thank you very much. That was the voice of Honorable Carol Square live from the conference hall of the Coalition for Democratic Change. And here with me, we have um, Ms. Cole Dolo. Um, what's your impression about this press conference, Ms. No, I think, I think it, was, it, was a, it was a well put together press conference. Um, it was good to, as a librarian, it's good to be a part of it. and. You know, we look forward to the most touching movement from the speech of the ambassador. He talks about the issue of Taylor. He talks about government of inclusion. He talks about he's a man of peace and other issues. What was key to you as a person? You know, the entire speech was, like I said, it was a well put together speech. But um, I think I was most touched about from the fact that he wanted to work together. So, you know, I commend him on a well put together speech. So. That was Ms. Cole Dolo, one of the stars from KMTV. Again, um, I'm Jay Judawa Jacobs. Um, we, we are live at the conference hall of the Mighty Coalition for Democratic Change, the CDC, and making this broadcast possible was Reinhard P. Jackson, His Wagner's Emmanuel Jarninen, um, Sherman Johnson. And again, I'm Jay Judawa Jacobs and the rest of the crew members, T.Y. Tyler, who was also here with us. Again, we want to say a very big thank you to all of our viewers, home and abroad. Keep watching KMTV as we bring you news as they unfold. Thank you so much. I'm Jay Judawa Jacobs. Hello, everyone. My name is Cole Dolo with KMTV, a CEO of UOK Concierge Solution. KMTV have some exciting programs coming up and we are hosting a nationwide search for the best talents out there. If you have ever dreamt of being on television, you do not want to miss out on this opportunity. To qualify, send us a brief profile of yourself to our email address kmtvlib at gmail.com or you can drop off your profile to our Kim Johnson Road office across from the SDA Church. You can also give us a call at the number on your screen. You do not want to miss out on this opportunity. See you on the next show.